Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Oh, guys, I am back at home again. Just got off a bus less than an hour ago after nine hours of travel from Quito to Cuenca. And this time I discovered the most comfortable bus. <laughs> we have been on every single one of them now. That was our third trip to and from Quito. And every time we've taken a different bus. And now we know that Express Sucre is the hands down winner in comfort and luxury and style. I mean, if you have to take a bus for nine hours, you're going to want a semi cama. It's like a partial bed and it leans almost all the way back. And it has the, the thing that comes down and your feet just have the platform that just puts you in such a great position. And uh, I was smart this time and I bought one of those neck roll pillows that the uh, vendors sell for $3.50 that Walmart in the United States sells for $20 and they're in boring colors from Walmart. I used to have one. I think I might actually still have one in, um, might have it in Detroit, but I just bought this one for $3 and 50 cents. And it's all kinds of pretty colors. It's blue, like a sky blue with straw, pink strawberries on it and white strawberry flowers and like all viney. And it's just super adorable. Anyway, <laughs> It was out of like the adult plain green one. So <laughs> I just, I had to have it. It was so cute. And it fell off my neck and fell behind my back. And then gave me the best back support. I'm all, oh, that's comfortable too. So I actually have a lot of energy. I think the last time I got back about a week ago or something, I can't remember what day I got back. I just, it's like I'm coming and going so much that I just barely know what's going on anymore. <laughs> but I am actually active and awake and, and mentally clear compared to the last time this happened after nine hours. I was exhausted then. Now I feel great, actually. And it's ironic because uh, on the trip up, like what now it's been like three, four days ago, it was Thursday we went up to Quito halfway like four in the morning my son's like oh look we're stopping at a store I want to run in and get some chips I'm all you know give me some chips too and when I say chips I mean uh potato chips normal potato chips not with the flavor just potatoes and sunflower oil and a sprinkle of salt nothing more so my son comes back with golpe <laughs> and since we were in Colombia like now three three and a half years ago, I thought, you know, gulpes, I always thought of it like the big gulp at 7-Eleven, you know, it's a big bag of chips and it's got three different flavors and, um, three different kinds. And I always thought, oh yeah, it's just kind of like the big gulp. Well, I was eating the chips and they were really good. They're like uh, barbecue flavor, but my insides had an allergic reaction. So for four days, my intestines have been swelling. I have like a swollen colon right now because of these golpe chips and golpe in Spanish means injury <laughs> or bruise like after being punched. <laughs> so I mean, I, when my friend Anthony came to visit us, I've been talking to him online for two years we met on a, a regular social site, not a dating site or anything like that, but just, you know, just someone I want to meet. Like, hey, you know, we've been friends for a couple of years. Let's hang out. And my stomach got, kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger the whole time we were walking around to the point where my pants popped open in the town square right after we went to the devil church. I don't know if I mentioned that. Like my pants just like literally just popped open. Like the fly came undone and then the buttons just boop, 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 just went off. I'm like... Oh, I'm done. I need to get back to the hostel. This is like freaking ridiculous. So like I'm here like doing my pants up. There's like families and kids going by. And I'm just like, oh my God, what the hell is happening? 
right now with my stomach. Like, this is ridiculous. This never happens. Like, I get a little bloated from water weight, but this was beyond that. And I'm like, I don't know. And I just happened to watch that stupid telenovela that said, <clears throat> there's like a commercial that showed this lady taking a pill and her stomach went down. And I was like, oh yeah, that's for me. I need to get that. <laughs> So my son ran out this morning before we left the hostel and got me this pill. It's made from one of the plants um, that grows here in Ecuador. And within a couple hours, my stomach went down and I was like, good, I'm better. I, you know, I, that was like the craziest thing. I'm like, I am never eating these chips again. And I feel like my diet hasn't been perfect, but it's been a lot more aligned with what my body needs. And then I just saw this, these chips I haven't had in like four years. I'm like, Oh yeah, let's eat those. And it was just like, I knew from the first bite, this was a wrong deal. <laughs> I shouldn't have been doing this. And I forgot the word gulp means injury. And so it's like totally my fault, but I feel like I've been, um, I mean, it's not, not the same exact thing, but imagine if you were like a vegan and you ate absolutely perfect like vegan raw foods and you lived a natural life and your water was perfect and no cosmetics and like your everything your body was just pure and everything was good and then after a whole year of that you get the big big bag of nacho cheese doritos and you eat it from beginning to end licking the bottom licking your fingers every inch of salt just you consume all of that imagine like that's kind of I mean I didn't do that it was just a smaller bag of chips but it it wasn't a huge bag it was just really tiny but I mean half of it was air it didn't matter it was just whatever it was like a barbecue smoky you know I think it had like hickory smoke or something in it and it just I mean, I'm still suffering, but it's better than it was. I don't know if you could tell yesterday I was having a hard time breathing and, you know, that. And then we went to the place that served us bugs and we were like, oh, my God. (laughs) There was like a lot of eating related related mishaps on this tour. (laughs) This trip wasn't a tour. It was just, just to go get our visas and stuff. But and it's hilarious because tomorrow I have to go get my... Social security, no, medical, medical insurance, not social security. It's like, but it's kind of like the, the, um, same thing as social security here in Ecuador. Now that we're residents, we get to have private or public health insurance and the public health insurance is excellent. They a hundred percent cover all dentistry. They cover, um, all illnesses that need to be maintained, for example, pre-existing conditions, huh, are covered. Things that need ongoing medicine are covered. Yeah, it's like a totally different ball game down here with insurance. So we're going to go and see what is and what isn't covered for sure tomorrow. But it doesn't matter. We need the insurance to get our cedulas, which is uh, the um, national identification card. So we're going to actually have our cards with uh, our faces on it and our names. And it's going to say temporary resident. And then in two years, we'll get the, the upgraded card. They'll say um, permanent resident. And they even tell you, they even say if you're single or not. Like, that's a big deal if you're divorced or widowed or single or married. I went on a date with someone who, um, halfway through the date, he's like, oh, I forgot to tell you that I just found out yesterday that I'm still married. And I'm like, what? He's like, we shouldn't really be on the date right now, actually. And I'm like, what? And he's all, well, because it's my civil code status. We're not supposed to, you know. I'm like, what the heck is going on right now? <laughs> you know, I'm not out here to date a married man. So it's like ridiculous. He's like, no, I just, my wife forgot to sign the dis- d- divorce papers. And she did, like, everyone signed everything, but we forgot to put it into the, the register's office. And then you have to update your civil status and then get your new card. 
I'm like, oh my God, what a pain in the butt. But okay, you know, whatever. He's like, so, you know, I was like, it never was going to go anywhere. I never saw him again anyway. But (laughs) we had a lovely dinner and a really crazy talk. Most of the crazy talk was on his half. (laughs) That's why we never had a second dinner. (laughs) But the civil, you know, the civil code status, the stuff is crazy. But, um, so I don't know. We've been traveling, but this was like such a great day. And I didn't even realize until one hour after our bus ride, we looked at the sky. We're like, Oh my God, it's a full moon. This is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And so bright. And an hour after we got on the bus is when this, when the full moon, I mean the the partial lunar eclipse happened. So we are in the middle of a full moon in Capricorn right now. (laughs) as well as a partial lunar eclipse, which makes, you know, eclipses make things more dramatic anyway. So I wanted to go over that. What does it mean for all of us? Um, We had a new moon in Cancer, which is all about hearth and home and family and, you know, close to home, new beginnings, possibly uh, new uh, relationships being deepened with those that we love two weeks ago. And now we are at the full moon. And we're going to have another new moon, by the way, uh, at the end of July. Usually when you have two full moons in a month, it's called a blue moon. But this is two new moons. It's not a new blue moon. (laughs) I don't know what it's called. I'll I'll come to that later. Uh, Tonight's full moon is called a buck moon because this is the time of year in which deer antlers grow a lot faster than any other month. And this is also called by another native tribe. And both these tribe tribal names come from tribes on the East coast of the United States of America. And the second name for tonight's full moon is the thunder moon. And that's because there's also a lot more thunder and lightning storms, a lot more rain, but when when it's combined with the storminess. So this is traditionally, since the Farmer's Almanac has been coming out, I think since 1729, maybe, uh, they've always called it these things, the Buck Moon or the uh, Thunder Moon. I think the Bear Moon is in August. (laughs) I was born under a Bear Moon. It's what makes me a a good mama bear type. I've always been a mama to people and watching out for my family and friends as if they're all my kids and especially to my kids. My God, I'm very protective of my kids. (laughs) I'll go to the mat and duel to the death for my kids and they know it. (laughs) I'm a complete mother bear when it comes to my children. But um, anyway, so we... uh, we're focused more, you know, during the full eclipse. That was a solar eclipse with the new moon. Now we're having a lunar eclipse with the full moon. A partial lunar eclipse. So Capricorn is all about business, work, negotiations, career, making decisions about the rest of your life. And now it's just amplified with the uh, eclipse. So... If you're not where you want to be, this is the time to change it up. This is the time to say, you know what? Take this job and shove it, Jack. I'm out. This is the time to say, look, you know what? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to actually trust and believe in myself at this point and uh, go forward with um, everything I already knew about myself anyway all the things I suspected, but then, you know, this is a time to get out from your, from behind your own shadow, from the own partial shadow you've cast upon yourself. This is a time for you to go out and get going for real, not talking about it, you know, stop yammering and more hammering. (laughs) I mean, like, this is really it. This is the time where we need to get serious about what it is we're doing, where we're headed in life. And it's got to align with who we are inside in our souls, who we are as spiritual people. 
You know, if your thing is to be a shaman, why are you still selling real estate or working in an office? If your thing is to be, you know, a dentist, why are you still the dental hygienist or the secretary? You know what I'm saying? And if your thing is to get your university degree, why are you working, uh, selling hot dogs on a corner or whatever, you know what I mean? So whatever it is you're doing, if it's not in a complete and total alignment with who you are right now, you know, you need to align yourself with your own integrity and be who you are. Because the thing is you're now at a place in which the universe is going to fully support you in a way that it never had before. We're in the fifth dimension guys. Our dreams are coming true fast and rapid. Things are flying at us. <laughs> you know, it's like we're, we're hurtling through space and the stars are coming at us like Star Trek. Like, you know, the beginning of Star Trek where all the stars like, boom, 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 boom. It's like things are coming to you so fast like that now. We are at a point where we're going to just be manifesting our lives so rapidly that... We have to align ourself with our soul and our higher purpose right now. This is, you know, or get off the pot time. You know what I'm saying? This is the time. This is it. This is the time to be serious and uh, stop doubting yourself. You know, you know that you're good. You know that you've got this. You know the universe has got your back. This is the time to, uh, you know, Align yourself with the people, places, things, and situations that will bring you to where you need to be to get where you need to get. You're going to make your biggest money when it is your passion. So there are signs that are going to be affected by this a lot more than others. So we're going to go over that right now. So basically, uh, it's going to, it's the, you know, the moon, the moon is in Capricorn. The full moon is in Capricorn. So Capricorns will be affected probably the most. My, um, my, uh, rising sign is Capricorn. So I'm pretty affected by it on my, on the bus ride home, not even being aware. I knew it was a full moon. I could see the moon the whole time. And it, oh God, this is a beautiful country. I can't believe I just became a resident in this gorgeous, gorgeous country. I mean, we're looking at snow capped volcanoes. The the sky was so clear this time last week. It was, it was so, um, like the first time we came back on the bus, it was so dark. We couldn't see anything. The the second time we came back, it was so foggy and cloudy and rainy that we couldn't see anything. Today, it was a clear, beautiful sky, blue skies. Um, the clouds were like all various shades of pinks and reds and oranges. And oh my God, it was like living inside a dream, looking at this gorgeous through the huge bus windows. This bus was taller than all the other buses. We're never going to take another bus besides this one. As long as there's a ticket on Express Sucre, that's the bus I think we're going to take. <laughs> you know, until I could be wealthy and just fly. But the bu- it's the, this bus was worth it. I mean, we saw three movies on the way home. It was amazing. We saw, um, but the movies themselves were freaking ridiculous. Like we saw, um, oh God, the first one was Bumblebee. <laughs> About the Transformer, which is like, well, okay, good. At least we know his... Uh, at least we know where he came from and his origins. And that was interesting. Of course, it's all in Spanish. So we only, you know, I only understand like a third of what's happening. And then the second movie was some Jason Statham movie called Meg about Megalodon sharks. And hilariously enough, my husband and I read that book that that movie was based on years ago. My ex-husband who died. And then we had like this fascination about Megalodon sharks and we, kept, you know, anything we get our hands on about it for a while. We were like, this is so weird and fascinating. <laughs> I can't believe they made a Jason Statham movie. And it's, it's just, his movies to me are just all about cheap jokes and swinging your dicks around. You know, it's like, we're just a big testosterone fest. And, you know, 
he's he's you know no one can stop the sharks except him and the shark comes up to him and stops and well because it's him I guess I don't know his bo I don't know what's going on just it's just it's just too I don't know it's too over the top ridiculous for me like we're kind of making fun of it after a while then we just like listened to music and danced in our chairs and sang <laughs> you know it was just like my son and I were just like this is we were laughing at it like well at least it wasn't as sexist as some of the other things we've seen on on buses and then the third movie was Aquaman which was like ridiculous like they're introducing characters like the last 10 minutes it was like again everything's in Spanish so I don't know what the hell's going on but I mean it's visually stunning but it just to me was just ridiculous is again like oh these you know 4,000 year old beings or whatever like live in the bottom of the ocean and they're like what supposedly they're in charge of the ocean and all these races live under the ocean and nobody really knows about it on the surface and you know like we're somehow all in the dark and for us it's just a hurricane happened but you know it was just the way that the movie was is so ridiculous you know I, I don't know I, I don't get into all that that all the superhero crap is like it's three dimensional thinking and it's just like us versus them and oh we gotta swing our dicks around and see who's is bigger and how we're gonna you know beat the other one down and win we gotta win it's just ugh so I don't know it's just it was like ridiculous but it was nice to have movies at least on board something to look at when there was no way to see out the window anymore but it was nice to look at but my son and I were just like talking most of the time and having fun with each other and you know but this this eclipse thing happened and I guess it's supposedly gonna affect people's emotions people are supposed to be have running high and have a me too energy I don't know what that's about in the world maybe we can see it you know Epstein went to I guess jail or to get sentenced or something today. Thank God. Put that effort away, you know, but, and Trump shouted off, off, spouted off about Bitcoin and it went down. Thank God by 3000. I say, thank God, because I want to buy in. (laughs) Because the moment that, um, Facebook does their thing, it's going to go big. I have a feeling a hundred thousand they'll go up to a hundred thousand next year. I have no way to give money advice. I don't know what the hell I'm doing when it comes to investments. So don't take it. Don't take my advice as like actual to go out and do this. But if it's something you've been thinking about doing, um, keep, keep your eyes peeled because when it goes down below 9,000, it's the time to jump on it. You know, even if it's at 8,500 and it drops down to 7,500, don't worry about it. It's going to go way up. I have a feeling it's just my gut instinct, my intuition. And I had an intuition that was going to go up, um, like over 13,000, like when it was the second time it dipped down below 8,000. I don't know if you guys follow this at all, but I just feel like, it, you know, we, it, we got to hedge our bets one way or the other until we can all get our, um, you know, the money that's coming to everybody. I see it. I saw it like even today. In the next two to three to six years, the whole world's going to have um, basic income for everyone. They're going to work it out. I just feel it. They're going to feel it. They're going to, you know, some lady on the bus today, um, she wasn't on the bus, but she hopped on the bus for a few minutes to beg for money for an oxygen treatment for her mother. She needed $350 to keep her mother, in, in who's in the hospital, alive. Because the socialized medicine, they covered everything, but they didn't cover that. And she'd already had like a lung removed. She had cancer that metastasized and she just wanted more time with her mom. It was the only person in her family she had left. So we donated some money to her and a lot of people on the bus did. And it was like a lot for someone to get on the bus and beg for something to save someone's life like that. Like she had to swallow her pride and do that. And she was shaking and she was scared. So if you guys feel so inclined, pray for the lady on the bus. God knows who you mean if you say that. Um, And she did this probably a couple hours after the eclipse happened. 
but I could feel her power, like, and how the energy of that was so, um, she was so pure of heart and innocent in her asking. She was in her sorrow, but like my son and I felt it in our hearts that sometimes people beg for money and we know they're just lying, you know, or like their situation isn't nearly as dire as they're saying. And they're just trying to get money because they're lazy. They want to work a job. Like we've seen a lot of people, like we were on a bus in Lima and we saw this guy hobble on board with a cane and then he gets off and he's kind of like walking away normal. (laughs) And, and he got caught and he was on, he was like on the news the next day. We were like, yeah, we knew you're full of crap, you know. But this lady tonight, we knew she was not. She was absolutely telling the truth. So, I don't know. It was cool, though. I felt grateful in that moment that I was able to give to somebody and help them. You know, I feel like hopefully if I'm ever in a situation that someone will help me like that. So, I always help people. I always, you know, help people and hope they pay it forward. Anyway, so it's expected this uh, lunar eclipse and the full moon. It's expected to help you get serious about what really makes you happy in your life as well. So what is it, you know, that makes you happy? What do you think would bring you to a state of happiness? I know for me, looking around my house right now, oh my God, I've been, I just like, I've been traveling so much. Like, it would make me happy just to clean my house, clean my room. I think I'm going to go on a juice fast. I've been feeling it um, all day today. The energy be, of, of it being like, okay, you know what? It's time to get absolutely 100% serious about all of my goals. <laughs> like, all of my goals, like getting, getting in shape. Um, I mean, seriously, after this gulp based situation, <laughs> I'm like, oh, damn, I have to. Like, even in the bus station, this guy was selling these fruit salads. Oh, my God, really good fruit salads, just for a dollar. It's kind of expensive for the fruit, but this man, like, he cut them all up, up all, like, in little chunks, all perfect bite size, and so loving, like, you know what I mean? Like, I could tell he put so much love into what he's doing, and he's... He, this guy's like in, um, he had these huge, huge things of fruit and he just, just was hustling, going around dollar and dollar, you know, and so lot of frutas, you know, fruit salad, fruit salad. And it's just, it was just like cut up like, um, papaya and, and, um, pineapple, kiwi fruit, watermelon, strawberries. It was a really big, it was like two cups of fruit. It was like for a dollar, which is, you know, fruit is, is kind of cheap here. You know, it's that it's maybe 50 cents worth of fruit. But so he's making 50 cent profit. Not bad. Not bad. But he put it in a little plastic container and on top he taped a little, um, it looked like a little pitchfork, like, you know, to eat the fruit with. And it was like super adorable. And I'm like, oh, and he hand, hands it to you with a bag and a napkin. I mean, it was, like, pretty nice that his little setup, you know, and he was hustling, just stone-cold hustling to make that money. And um, I felt good about helping him out. And, God, I felt so great to eat fruit. It was so nice to have fruit finally. You know, I didn't have a lot of fruit in the last three, four days, and I was jonesing, and then that papaya was amazing. But, um, But, yeah, I mean... Whatever makes you happy, whether it's getting in shape, eating better, going on a fast, going on a juice fast or juice cleanse. My friend just told me yesterday, uh, Michelle just wrote me and she said, hey, you know what? There's this guy that's doing a celery uh, juice cleanse and it works for everything in your body. So, you know what, guys, I'm going to check that out because I love celery. It has a nice, clean flavor and I could do that easy. That sounds awesome. So I might mix it with watermelon. Watermelon is excellent as well. It's a lot of fiber in it. Remember I told you guys about the personal watermelon challenge. <laughs> My kids and I used to do. <laughs> we just see who, who could win, who could eat their personal watermelon first. And it was like impossible. We'd just be like on day three still with the personal watermelon going, this is impossible. You can't even eat a whole personal watermelon. <laughs> it was like ridiculous. 
All right. The people that are going to be most affected by this are Capricorns and Cancers the most, followed by people of the signs Libra and Aries. Now, I do believe if you're a rising sign are, are one of these four, probably you're going to be affected. I feel really deeply affected by it. You know, plus I'm just, I just got my residency, which means I could get a job if I need to. That's so great, but I don't want to, I want to have just my podcast and maybe have a little painting furniture business doing my artwork on furniture would be awesome. Every now and again, make 300 bucks or something would be cool, but I don't want to do a full-time business. I want to do podcasts full-time, you know? That's where my passion and where my energy lies. So what is it for you guys? What are you going to do? What do you think your, uh, where your passion is? What are you, where are you going to (laughs) be? This is the time to think about it and get serious and just start doing it. Just believe in it. Just believe in it. Be as forceful as a bull in a China shop about it too. Just go for it. Because no one's going to make your life better but you. No. All right, guys, uh, on the Ascension symptom scale today, honestly, all we had was 93. This is the lowest it's been since I started the Ascension symptom scale. I asked my higher guidance. I'm like, Hey, where are we at today? I don't feel hardly any symptoms last night when I finished the show and I published it. Oh my God. My, my ears are ringing like crazy today. Not so much little bit ringing, but you know, I was just on a bus for nine hours, which is pretty loud, but no, no, like really, uh, very little symptoms. I feel mentally clear. I feel in spite of the gulpe issue. I feel actually pretty physically good. I'm feeling energetic and I feel like I cannot wait to get to the rest of my life. Like I'm just like, just woo. That energy that happened today is like, damn. Yeah. But I don't get, I don't have any symptoms of I have to take care of this and that and the other thing in order to get into the fifth dimension further. I feel like we're kind of at the tail end of it, guys. Schumann residents today, uh, they only had the 1700 report in the evening. It says, even today, pattern confirmed. The activity was shorter, seven hours from 7 a.m. to 14 a.m. UTC time, but the maximum peak was more significant, reaching 60 hertz, at 12 UTC. That's cool. 60. I mean, that's well into the fifth dimension right there. I mean, that's, that's excellent. So I don't know. I think, uh, I don't know. Do you guys feel it? Do you feel like we're there and we're getting ready to have something massive occur sometime later in the summer? I just feel it. Um, my, again, uh, Michelle said her, she is telepathing with her twin flame who's saying, yeah, you know what? And he, he has a little bit more knowledge of this stuff. And he's like, yeah, you know, we're, uh, we're going to have a three day, the three days of darkness, but it's not what people think. You know, people are thinking it's nuclear war or it's going to be all the volcanoes explode at once or You know, it's not what you think. It's not what what we think. I don't think at all. It's just going to be like we're in homeostasis and the matrix is reorganizing itself. And it's not going to be bad. We're just going to be surrounded by love and beauty. You know, we'll be just sleeping and then we'll wake up and go, oh, huh, that's what that was. Cool. And we'll be all right with it. And it's going to feel normal and natural, just like taking a nap on a Sunday afternoon on a lazy day. You know, I feel like it's going to be that easy, honestly. All right. We're going to get to a course in miracles. And we are, I can't believe we're already in lesson 37. Has it really been this long? It has. Okay, lesson 37 in A Course in Miracles is My Holiness Blesses the World. This idea contains the first glimmering of your true function in the world or why you are here. Your purpose is to see the world through your own holiness. Thus you and the world are blessed together. No one loses. 
Nothing is taken away from anyone. Everyone gains through your holy vision. It signifies the end of sacrifice because it offers everyone his full due. And he is entitled to everything because it is his birthright as a son of God. And by his, it means you. You know, my holiness blesses you, dear one. My holiness blesses this bed. My holiness blesses this curtain. My holiness blesses this chair. My holiness blesses this body. So there you have it. When we come back after the break for the second half of the show tonight, I am going to give you guys a tarot card reading. (laughs) The full moon, partial lunar eclipse, tarot card reading right after this message. If you're listening to this, you obviously like podcasts and you probably like music too. Long walks on the beach, romantic dancing under the stars. And oh, wait, we're not doing that right now (laughs) on Spotify. You can listen to all of that in one place for free. And you don't even need a premium account, which is cool. Free is always good. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, including your long romantic walks on the beach. Also, one one thing I love about Spotify is that you can easily share what you're listening to with your friends via Spotify's integrations with the social platforms like Instagram. So that makes it really, really versatile. Just search for Metaphysical Soul Speak on the Spotify app or browse podcasts in the Your Library tab. And follow me, of course, don't forget, so that you'll never again miss an episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak. Spotify is the world's leading music streaming service, and now it can be your go-to for podcasts, too. Thank you guys so much for supporting Metaphysical Soul Speak on Spotify. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you. Alright guys, I've uh, put the phone down, I'm shuffling the cards, I've already shuffled them four times, going to shuffle them three more, whoops, three more times, ah, after I drop them, (laughs) my son and I were uh, the recipients of a lovely random act of kindness this morning. When we were finished with our free breakfast at the hostel, they said that they were had already put everything away and we couldn't have a second cup of coffee, darn it. <laughs> Which we kind of prepared for. We had money in our pocket, and my son said, we're going to go. He said, I'll just go over for you, Mom. You weren't feeling good, so I was feeling good this morning because of stomach issue. <laughs> and so he says, I'm just going to go get you know coffee over at the Abuelita Esther Cafe that we just fell in love with this little cafe. I mean, it's decorated simply, but sweet. Just, there's something, there's energy that Louisa, the owner and Nancy who works there. And then her brother, Thomas, who works there, sweetest people ever. And so we decided, 
you know, we need one more cup of their coffee. It was excellent. And we got huge cups to go. And she was waiting. Like she knew she knew that that was going to be our third and last day. And she knew it. And she kind of felt that we were going to be there. And she had a little, uh, jar of candy. She makes these little homemade candies and she puts crushed coffee beans in her chocolate and um, and then she wraps it up in gold, red, and cobalt blue and silver. And it's like a little jar of Christmas. And she puts it in a little baby jar. And she put a little uh, cloth of orange and blue polka dot. I mean, yeah, orange with white polka dots. Um, really cheerful, cute little cloth. And then she wrapped that with a ribbon. And I think she had several of them there, like a, they're like gifts you can buy. But because we had been there so many times in a row, my she gave it to my son. She said, this is for you and your mom. And we're so happy we met you. And, and she knew that we had become residents. And so that was so sweet to receive that. Like, oh my gosh. And we, anyway, my son, during the break, my son and I just ate this candy. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> so it was lovely to have that. All right. So because the uh, full moon, the full thunder moon, buck moon, partial lun- lunar eclipse is all about business and career. I've decided to ask eight questions of the tarot and I'm not really asking the cards. Obviously I'm asking Lord God, prime creator who created all of us, who knows all the answers because I certainly don't. (laughs) I just know how to read the cards because he gave me the ability to telepath with him and read the cards. So I am asking our, basically the prime creator of the universe. No question is too big or too small for him. He has told me before. (laughs) I have eight questions about the different kinds of businesses and or work or careers that we do. And so I'm breaking it down to the best of my ability and I'm going to pull a card for each of these. So the first question I'm asking and I'm connected to God. Yes. Finger testing says yes. First question I'm asking is, um, what is the card that will help guide the people who are either already in or would like to be in a spiritually based business or career or work. So again, this is what card would guide people the most from this full moon energy. And if they're there already more power to them, if they want to be there, that's, what we want to find out. What is the one true guiding card right now for the people who want a spiritual based career or spiritually based business or spiritually based work or already have it? So please God allow the card. Oops, there goes my phone sliding. Sorry about that. That noise might have sounded weird on the phone. My phone slid down my book. Everything's everything's flying out at once. Is this the card for the people, the spiritual base business? Okay, great. The Hierophant. <laughs> we got this last week. Hierophant, so the higher self, basically. So people that want a spiritually based business work, this is what your card is. Uh, let me see. In order to have a spiritually based business or work, you need to connect with your higher self and get completely clear on what it is that you want. Meditate and get very still and silent inside of your heart. And then allow it, your heart to speak to you. Connect your eighth chakra as well as your high heart, the highest part of your heart chakra. Connect to all of your spiritual guides and your spiritual team, your higher self, even your holy guardian angels connect with everything of a higher spiritual realm. Pull out a spiritual based notebook 
only for this career or work or business and start writing down everything that you hear intuitively and inspirationally allow the ideas to flow and write down everything you need to know um, where you're going to get your funding or your next funding if you're already in business where you're going to advertise and how what your budget's going to be what your decorating scheme is going to be and who you're going to hire to help you who you're going to hire to help get the word out what Instagram influencers what friends you know have a long um, list of people they could write emails to all that kind of stuff so just ask your higher guidance and that is where you're going to get all of your information if you are somebody who is already in a spiritually based business career or work or would like to be based on the past energy of the past 24 hours in this full moon and partial lunar eclipse in the sign of Capricorn. So, okay, the second question I have is for people who are entertainers or creative types. So whether you are an, an actor professionally or a singer, a dancer, songwriter, or a writer, writer, um, or if you're an artist, you know, like me, I want to paint on desks. I'm also a screenwriter. So I have also for inspirational that can also mean writers. So it depends on what kind of writer you want to be. Maybe you're a creative writer, an entertainment writer, and you want to write um, books that are fiction. They're going to make people laugh. Or, in, you know, if you want to inspire people, that would be under the inspirational question I have coming up for number six. But the number two question I have is for people who are entertainment or creative types, you know, people that sing in a cabaret or dance in a, I don't even know what you dance in, dance on stage in a play or actors, especially actors in movies, even commercial actors on TV commercials or voiceover actors. So anyone in the interna- entertainment industry, industry, can't even talk now after the long day I had, but creative types that want to have a career, business, or work. So, Prime Creator, you got that? Okay, great. We're going to start shuffling. Right away comes out. Boom. First off. Queen of Pentacles. All right. That's nice. So, the Queen of Pentacles comes out for that card. Um, For this, get in touch with your strong spiritual female side. Or pair up with a female person or persona to bounce your ideas off of and to work towards your goals. Now is the time to not only tap into your own creative spirit and energies, is now the time to tap into that greater overall female feminine form. This can mean Divine Mother, Mother Earth Gaia, any of the uh, gods or, well, goddesses that you wish to work with. They're all standing by. (laughs) They're like, we're like operators. We're standing by. We're waiting. We're waiting to hear from you. So if you're um, a creative type and you want to write love songs, Goddess Aphrodite might be the one to contact. If you are an entertainer and you want to sing in church and that's your thing you might want to contact mother mary you know for example so pick your goddess or your spiritual female master or your business partner to be if you're entertainment creative type this is the time if you're a man and you're an actor maybe this is the time to try to find your female counterpart that will help you um have a balance emotionally and spiritually in your roles. That might be an example of this. So, but as far as the queen of pentacles, you're going to make a lot of money. If you tap into the feminine and female side of this, anything else? Okay. And by the way, I'm channeling prime creators, uh, through telepathy, telepathy during these questions. Um, just so you know, it's not what the cards themselves say. It's not what it's based on. 
um, you know, I don't look at, at the meaning of the card, you know, cause anyone can do that. I'm actually channeling God directly when I ask these questions. So I'm kind of in trance right now. feels rather pleasant actually. Okay. People that are of a helping in the helping professions who are in a career or business or work or would like to be people. This next question, God is for people in the helping professions, counselors, nurses, um, anybody who wants to help others, you know, um, the opposite of service to self service to others through the helping profession. So is this the question? Oh yes. Very good. Nine of pentacles. And the word here says realization in the image is of course of nine pentacles laid over the Sephiroth, the 10, um, Kabbalah positions of the tree of life. This is, um, again, I'm using the Andes tarot cards, the only ones I have right now, but there, um, it's like a double headed snake on top. So we channel prime creator, see what this means. When you're with the helping profession, your life can go either way at this moment. If you want to, if you have a job, you might want to step into the career part. If you have a, the career part, you might want to make it more of a grander business for yourself. So say your it's your career to be a nurse and you might want to have your own business based on that or be a part of a business based on that in which you can become a partner. I mean, I'm seeing like the image is like a double headed snake and I don't think like it's doesn't mean like two faced or something like that. I feel like realization means that instead of making a salary working for somebody else, you might want to buy into a group where you're all going to make um, more money together. If you're in the helping or profession, helping profession. So like if you're a counselor, you might want to have your own practice. If you want to make more money, you might want to band together with, you know, five or 10 other counselors and get a huge space and make it a beautiful, beautiful space. I used to go, you guys, if you're interested in this kind of thing and you need your own, like I'm a hypnotherapist. I used to have my own hypnotherapist office in studio city. And I paid $10 an hour for the room for somebody who did not have a full-time practice. They were only part-time, but they were paying like $1,500 or something a month. And so for them, they decorated their office. It was like the high class furniture. I mean like twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth of furniture art that she had imported from all over the world, mostly from like Africa and Asia. It was an incredible room and it was overlooking the valley and it was just like in a high rise. I mean, we had an elevator and a doorman, you know, and, and security guard and a full staff keeping the building clean. And it was an amazing experience, you know, just right out the gate. Boom. I got this, this thing and this amazing office that there's no way, no way I could have had it except for this opportunity, you know, that had afforded itself to me as soon as I graduated. (laughs) And then I moved to grass Valley and I found a similar thing where these people had a house that ironically enough, it'd been, uh, it was hilarious. It was a, a, a brothel in the 1800s in grass Valley, but they had turned it into a counseling center And there was all these offices and we got to pick which office we wanted. And there was, when we got there, there there's only one left and that was our office, but we shared it with other people and we only paid $5 to share the space. And again, it was like, we couldn't afford to buy a $300,000 house or, you know, turn it into five different offices with bathrooms and waiting rooms and the whole nine yards. But you know, the opportunity presented itself. So if you are a counselor, and you're looking to expand your business, maybe get with other counselors. If you are looking, um, as you know, 
any any of the helping professions. It's always good, like, also, if you are, say you're a nurse and you want to work for a private practice doctor, you guys might want to go in on an office with people who are like a nutritionist and a counselor and a massage therapist and a hypnotherapist and maybe a color therapist or something else. So if you could put together um, a group where you're not going to compete with each other because a massage therapist does totally different what a massage, what a hypnotherapist does, you know, and, but if everyone compliments each other, you could kind of hand out each other's cards and you might keep that client so happy that they'll keep coming back to you and refer everybody to you. You see, versus if you're just like in a strip mall and you're the only, you know, nurse or counselor there, you know, doctor, nurse practitioner, whatever, you know, you, so I hope you guys see where I'm going with that. So if you're a hypnotherapist, team up. This is what I'm getting realization. This is how you're going to realize a lot of money. And what if, you know, everybody puts in like, you know, 10% of their take every month and that goes towards the office or whatever you know, or the building, you know, to improve it. And I used to have a chiropractor who put out, um, sometimes you do finger sandwiches. Sometimes it was just like health food crackers or cookies that were like sugar free, just, you know, and, and like, I think he had some grain free stuff. He had some amazing, like, but it was always, you know, or fresh fruit, have a bowl of apples, fresh water. People fill up their water bottles, that kind of thing. So that's what I'm getting from that for that one for, as far as the helping professions are concerned. So, all right. All right, God, am I so connected with you? Great. I always keep doing the muscle testing. Got to keep doing that, guys. If you're going to read cards for a living, always keep that muscle testing. Keep that as a backup. You don't want to rely on your own gut instinct or ego. When it comes to this stuff, um, try to connect to the person's higher self, you know. All right. The tower card keeps jumping out even while I'm not ans asking about that. <sighs> Is that a card for me? Oh, great. I have a feeling that things are things are coming together in, in an amazing way, but all right. Okay, helping professions. Now, then okay, the next one is service industry. When I say service industry, I mean tourism, travel, bus drivers, uh, airplane pilots, hotel, motel, Holiday Inn. <laughs> so, God, you get that? So, anyone who is in the business or in, has a job, that's their work, or they want this as their career, they want to own their own hotel, or maybe they want to have a restaurant inside a hotel, whether or maybe they just want to work as a chef inside a hotel or inside a restaurant. Um, you know, my brother just moved across the U.S. to become a chef in a, a pretty famous uh, Italian restaurant. His his passion is food, and he's excellent. He's an excellent cook, and he just got an amazing, super, super good pay job in Colorado. I'm so proud of him. So. You know, so like this, this might be for him. He's in his passion already, already doing what he loves, already doing what he came here to do, but he, and he moved across country for it. He already found his calling, right? But maybe he needs some extra advice. So again, these cards are for guidance for people in that situation that this, this question is for service industry people like in hotel, travel, tourism, bus driver, airplane pilot, anything to do with trips, travel, service industry in that way so god i'm asking what is the one card that's going to guide the people they're either in a career in work in uh the business or would like to be so in the service industry is this the, the card for them is it this one no okay that was a hermit card that didn't make sense ace of pentacles ah satisfaction it even has a number 77 on it and a capricorn sign the ace of pentacles pentacles of course is money ace is starting off or something new and at the bottom it says satisfaction so god please tell us about this 
In the service industry, it is implied and imperative that you must create a sense and source of satisfaction for your clients and or guests. And this is the guiding, the guiding, uh, I'm hearing the word particle. (laughs) This is the guiding particle. Basically is the ace of pentacles. The ace means the beginning. Your customers always first ace is number one. And that's where your money's going to come from. When you allow your customers to feel emotionally and, you know, and mentally satisfied and, So if you're like in the service industry and say you have a, um, say you have a spa and you want people to feel satisfied, you have to let them know that they're number one, you know, that their health is number one, that the towels are always clean. The room of the, the temperature of the room is always warm, that the top of the line products that you use on their face was, uh, chosen or created with them in mind. So that's like the number one uh, piece of advice and guidance for people who are in the service industry or would like to be. Use top quality, top shelf stuff, um, whether it's top linens for your hotel room, top of the line furniture, the, the highest that you, amount that you can afford, or just the best, highest quality you know, cannabis oil, if you're going to massage with cannabis oil, you know, that that's actually very good for helpful. I mean, helpful for like arthritis or whatever, if that's what your thing is. If you're a bus driver, maybe, you know, uh, greet people to smile, make sure that their knees are taken care of on long bus routes. You know, people need to stretch their legs, you know, let's take five minutes here. Let's take 10 minutes there. And if it's 30 minutes extra, maybe that might be the thing, you know, I mean, if you're even an Uber driver, that could be part of the service industry. Bring uh, waters, you know, have have waters for people. Hey, I have waters for sale. You know, they're uh, 75 cents. I, I'm, I'm selling for a dollar. You know, whatever. If you're an Uber driver, you know, have a little extra. Here's a piece of gum for free. Here's a piece of candy for free. Would you like to buy a water? A lot of people forget water when they leave home. You know, just be more... Uh, in the way of putting your customers first, that's where your big money is going to come from. Let them know that they're number one, their aces in your book. And that's where your pentacles will come from. So that was the ace of pentacles for the service industry, industry, industry. Why am I having a hard time with that word today? (laughs) Okay. For service industry, folks, hotel, travel, tours, and bus drivers, Uber drivers, Lift drivers, all that kind of stuff. Now, the next uh, guidance is for people who are retired already or would like to be or are on SSI because of a disability or have some kind of benefits. Like for me, I have temporary benefits. So people that get money automatically without having to work for it at the moment, even though in the past you have worked for it, or if you're, you know, having physical or mental health issues for whatever reason, this, what is the, for people who are not going into a career or not wanting to, or wanting to get out of working and go into their retirement, because a lot of baby boomers in the world are retiring things like a new one every eight seconds or something in the world. So for the people that are retired SSI benefits, what is their highest guidance advice during this time of the full moon and Capricorn God? This is who I'm asking this time creator. So okay, please pull one card out. Have the angels pull one card out for us. This one's like the hard one. Okay. This is again for the retirees. Or people who would like to be in the giant chunk of cards just fell. Okay, retirees, SSI, people on benefits, uh, one one way or another, private or public or state, federal, any kind of benefits. Um, This also might be for soldiers, you know, as well, by the way. Um, This will also be for soldiers. 
that are already receiving like a retirement or benefits for one reason or another. Okay. Apparently there's no guidance for us. <laughs> the card is just not coming out. Usually it's like so fast. Okay, God. Is there a card for us? Okay, yeah, I get yes in the muscle testing. Oh, is this the same card? No. All right. All right, no, that just didn't. One card like flew over. Is this the card here for us? Okay. Oh. Ten of Wands. Ten also relates to the Wheel of Fortune. Wands is for inspiration and guidance. And the it is the Ten of Wands, and the word at the bottom of the card says autoconfianza. That is having self-confidence. Even though you are not working right now or you're going to stop working and take in the benefit of having money without having to go to a daily work situation or career or business, still you need to have self-confidence in yourself and you need to believe in yourself and your ability to still bring light and brightness to the world. You are not... Uh, oh, I'm not getting this word, God. Give me, give me another word. You are not at this time supposed to feel less than or bad. You're not supposed to have a negative attitude or energy surrounding not working anymore because there is a time to fulfill your work and career life. There is a time to rest and relax and provide joy and love and support for those people who are still around you working. Everybody gets a turn. <laughs> Everybody gets a turn to go to school. Everybody gets a turn to have a job. Everyone has a turn to have a business or a career. And everybody has a turn to retire and enjoy, release, relax, and let go, and just love life. So have self-confidence in yourself and do not beat yourself up for not continuing to work. If you feel restless, you can always go back to work. If you wish to follow up on your ideas and inspirations you've had while you were working and had a job and were busy, this is the time to, to just look into hobbies that might turn into small time businesses or small side hustles. <laughs> but this is not a time to feel less than others or feel guilty or feel uh, like you don't deserve the positive power of self-confidence because you absolutely do. You are loved and protected and guided each and every one of you, whether you're retiring or not, because you are simply my children. This is, of course, prime creator talking, not Elena. Even though I am a mama bear and, and yeah, I'll still act like I'm your mama, but I'm not really your mama. <laughs> Only your mama is your mama. <laughs> All right. So is there anything else to add to this guide about the retirees? No. Moving right along. All right, guys. We are now at question six. Prime Creator, I'd like to ask now on behalf of all the people out there that are wanting to be in or are already in inspirational work business or careers so this might be the speakers the inspirational motivational speakers of the world even podcasters people on YouTube even the writers people who write books or articles the people who want to inspire and help the world. What is their highest and best guidance card right now for this, the full moon in Capricorn? Again, this is for the inspirational writers, speakers, YouTubers, podcasters. Four of Swords Retire. 
What? Is this the card? Okay, this is where you go with that one. The Four of Swords. Um, for the people that are inspirational writers, speakers, YouTubers, podcasters, etc., those who are inspiring the world or would like to, haven't started yet, but they're wanting to get into it. Four of Swords. Know your stuff. Know what you're getting into. Understand that you need to cut away your own stuff and really, I'm seeing like cutting open your own life to examine the contents within. <laughs> that's kind of a weird image, but that's what I'm getting. Um, use the swords to cut away it all. Cut away all the dross in order to receive and get to the heart and meat of your own truths. You need to get into who you are and be very, very genuine. Sharing of yourself is what's, well, it's in, right? It's big. (laughs) Being honest with who you are and what you're going through because you're going to inspire the people that are also going through the same thing. So you've got to cut to the heart of the matter, cut to the truth of it. And retiro, retiro, I don't know what that means. Um, Hubalado is retiring. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause this for a moment and look that up. Oh my God, you guys, this is hilarious. I looked up retiro, retiro on my other phone and it, and it says removal. And then immediately my phone shut off because it removed itself from the situation of asking what that word means. (laughs) That was so weird. Now we're number, uh, minute 33 (laughs) while I said that. So... (laughs) Uh, so I was right. Okay, so good. My It's nice to know my intuition matches the uh, word at the bottom of the card. I, I know for the most part Spanish, a lot of words I'm still learning. So, okay, so removal. So you have to remove your previously conceived notions and thoughts about what you should be inspiring people about. And basically strip down your message to who you are at the core. If you are a lawyer or a doctor and your message is to do with your profession, don't start talking about how to get into dance or how to be a teen model. You know, like don't start speaking to people and then trying to inspire them about something that has nothing to do with you. Stick to your true stick to your true story stick to your truth so you have to remove all the outer layers of your preconceived notions and ideas and you have to remove everything that really won't serve others you got to remove the idea of taking other inspirational speakers ideas and making them your own and repackaging rebranding them Because that's not genuine. You need to get to the heart and core, cut to the heart and core of the matter in all ways, shapes, and forms. And this is a four of swords, so there might be four ways to do that. Heart, mind, body, and soul, for example. So that's the end of that for now. Also, there's a symbol right on this card of Libra. Libra. So that is yet another symbol of balance. So it's another sign of balance, okay? So the next question I'm going to ask God is this, Prime Creator. This now is for the lawyers and doctors of the world, people in the white-collar professions who are already doing this as their work or their career or their business or would like to what is the number one guiding card for people in the white collar professions, doctors, lawyers, and the like? Yes, baby. Yes, this is it. This is the, okay. For people in the white collar professions, what is going to be the best advice during this, the full moon in Capricorn with the partial lunar eclipse, love, two of cups, Levy, L-I-E-B-E, Levy, Levy, I can't even say it in, in German at the top. 
So love, two of cups. Uh, so if you're a white collar worker, the best way to get to the fastest amount of money and create and in- increase your business or when you're getting ready to get into this, I agree 100% love, 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 love. Get in touch with your heart. Get in touch with your high heart. Doctors are trained to take the love right out of their profession. I mean, if you find a doctor who still is in touch with his heart, you found a good one. You know, but if you're a doctor and you have been, you know, told that you need to be impersonal and you're told that you need to, you know, work on your you know, knowledge instead of your bedside manner. Now's the time to start looking into love, actually loving yourself first and loving your patients. And if you are a lawyer, same thing, you know, don't operate from your gut instinct or your mind, get into your heart, drop it down into your heart, drop your head into your heart and work with your high heart energy. That's the best way you're going to make the most amount of money at this moment in in the near future, actually. Change everything in your profession or practice to one of 100% pure and complete love. Devote yourself to love, to that two of cups, and it's all going to come back to you. You're going to be amazed if you haven't if you've taken the love factor out of your job, career, or business, and this might go for every single one on the list, but you know, say so that was all okay. So the very last card I have to pull tonight is for the blue collar professions. This would include like maids, janitors, um, hostesses in restaurants, um, the menial jobs that don't pay very much that you don't need. Usually you don't need a high school diploma for, you don't need a degree for, but these are extremely needed in the world. These are also people who pick fruit for a living or sell fruit on the side of the road. Um, I didn't mention salespeople, but salespeople might fall into one of these other categories. So that might be a helping profession if you sell something that's helpful to people. Um, it might be inspirational if it's, you know, or maybe service related if you sell uh, travel so or spiritual business, you know, or creative. So, you know, or blue collar professional salesperson might be someone who sells mops or brooms, you know or work in a hardware store. Okay. So people that are in a blue collar profession or would like to be have this as a professional career, or, you know, maybe you want to start your own made business. Maybe you want to open your own hardware store. Maybe you don't care how you make your money. You just need to eat and pay rent. Maybe you're a bartender and all you do, that might be a helping profession as well, but maybe you're a bartender and all you do is give people advice all day or listen to them. And that in and of itself is a great service. Some janitors do that because they like to clean up negative energy in space and they're cleaners and they're quiet and they're behind the scenes. So there's nothing wrong with being a blue collar profession. I've done many, I mean like God security guard work. I was a janitor for a while. My very first job when I was 15, I was a janitor. I learned about working. I learned about responsibility and I was a janitor and I also did um, like handyman work as a janitor. Weird, right? 15 years old. I was doing like varnishing staircases and painting lockers and polishing floors. It was insane. It wasn't just cleaning. It was like all kinds of crazy shit, but <laughs> you know, but that's how I learned. That's how I learned responsibility. And also I got in really good shape because there's a lot of good, you know, a lot of exercise. All right, so blue collar professions, uh, what advice or guiding card prime creator could we give to people who are in blue collar professions or would like to be um, career, business, or just a normal job? Normal jobs, you know, clerk at a grocery store, you know, checkout girl, checkout guy, whatever. 
Um, is this it? Okay. This is a really good card for people in the blue collar professions for sure. Strength. What it takes in order for you to be in a blue collar profession is a great deal of force, a great deal of strength. La fuerza, the force it has on here. When you are in a blue collar profession, people tend to ignore you, not look you in the eye. They tend to maybe look down at you or maybe even make fun of you if they, you know, outright bully you because they think that maybe you are less than them. And what it takes for you to be in a profession like this, in a menial task sort of job, whether it's being a file clerk or um, answering phones as a receptionist or I've done plenty of those jobs for sure. I've been a secretary more often than not. <laughs> uh, when you are in a blue collar profession, people tend to look down at you, ignore you, pass you over. And that's why maybe your higher self needs you to be in that right now. You need to learn how to call upon your own strength. You need to be a force to be reckoned with in and of yourself. Also, this gives you the power of your own mind to yourself. If you're a security guard, you have your mind to yourself most of the time. And you're going to learn your inner strength. You're going to learn who you are as a person. There's nothing wrong with being in, in this kind of a work or career or business situation, but you have to learn the power of your own personal energy. And that might be why you're doing this right now, why your higher self chose this for you as a sign that you need to become stronger. You need to strengthen yourself from within. You need to learn who you are and what you believe in and where you're going in life until you get to the next possible step. Also, doing menial jobs is a way to, even if it's temporary work through a temporary agency or an employment agency, these kind of jobs are excellent to build up your strength, not only physical stamina, but mental stamina, and also your capital, building up your financial capital so that you can buy into the business you might want to go into. Maybe there's a nice network marketing opportunity or an MLM you're interested in. Building up the capital in a normal menial labor job, perfect to jump into the next step of being in a network marketing. So this might be the stepping stone that you need to get into something different or better. This might be the financial capital that you need to build up in order to go back to college, to go back to university, or to take a training program that you've been wanting to take. Maybe there is a law of attraction course you've been wanting to take and you have a janitor job. You're going to get that law of attraction course and maybe you're going to start teaching at the Learning Annex or at Coursera or Udemy.org. Maybe you're getting ready to pay for your um, Reiki training and that blue collar job is going to be the thing that you need to get that extra money to go do it. So you're going to become a force to be reckoned with and you're going to learn your own strength when you are in a blue collar profession. All right, guys, I I'm happy with this. This was an excellent reading. I want to say thank you, of course, to the prime creator for being here for us each and every day in each and every way possible, because if it wasn't for him, her, them, we would not even be here to listen to this episode. Anyway, that's it. That's I'm done. I'm done for the day. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being my listener and subscriber. Feel free to write me at metaphysical soul speak at gmail.com. Send me voice messages. If you want it to be played on the air, let me know. If not say private before you start talking and then I will not share it. But you have to add me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical. And then you could just start sending me voice messages after you favorite my podcast, of course. That's the only way you can send a message through the Anchor 
app or the website. Anyway, well, that's it. That's all I got to say about that, guys. I'm now feeling tired, finally. (laughs) The whole day and the whole past four days have just finally caught up with me. So, that's it. That's it for tonight. I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension. Until next time, peace. Chances are you've heard of CBD oil, but maybe you're a little afraid it might make you a little high or super drowsy. Possibly you're not going to pass uh, mandatory drug testing at work. Am I right? Well, I found an amazing company. I'm including the link in this episode's description. Okay. This is derived from only the hemp plant. It does not contain THC, which is the factor in marijuana that makes you high. This CBD oil has been known to reverse aging, help you through weight loss issues. You will literally lose weight on our products if you want. Also reverses hair loss. It also helps you with things like insomnia, anxiety, pain in your muscles and joints, and it gives you benefits throughout your body with its high quality antioxidants. We even have a vape. Would you like to try the blueberry cheesecake? (laughs) I know I would. I mean, there's so much danger with vaping these days, but not when it is only CBD oil. That's right. You could vape not only anytime you want, because it's not going to make you high, but it's also going to be healthy for you. How's that? Pretty cool, right? Well, go ahead and look in my episode description for my link. And, well, start using your CBD oil today. If you're interested in the business end of it, it's absolutely free to join. It's absolutely free every month, actually. I have never seen a business like this in all my life. So, you can start, well, using your CBD oil and you can start a brand new Side hustle for yourself. Hey, (laughs) as in Hey Yoka Shaman approves of this message. I love you guys. And well, here's to your health.